Shall we begin? The year is 3036, and mankind is in as poor a state as you'd think it would be at this point. The slow decline of holding the people in power to account throughout the 20th century led to a period of history the textbooks now refer to as the beginning of the end. Countries ran out of other nations to vilify, and resulted to going to war with themselves. Town versus town, city versus city, people versus people. Believing the only way to end this war with itself was escalation, America pretty much nuked itself. The South fired on the North, the West annihilated to the East, the Midlands were all like, what the hell guys? The country was destroyed, basically burned to a nuclear cinder and in need of a few hundred years of airing out before it became habitable again. The thing about IPAs is, well, the, you, you know what IPA stands for? Yes. It's Indian Pale Ale. It, it's not even from India. It was brewed here. Why do they call it an IPA? John, we need to talk about your bar tab. It's pretty racist when you think about it. Is India even still a place? I don't know, John. I'm a barman, not a map guy. What I do know is you owe me 800 double dollars. Eight? That can't be right. Your tab's been open all year. Now I know you're lying to me because I didn't drink all of December. I remember being very high on Zentarian mushrooms during Christmas. And I remember still being very high when it was warm, so... John, are you going to pay your tab, or am I going to have to break your legs again? That was you? Pete, I thought we were friends, man. I sang at your wedding. It's Bill, and your tone and pitch was terrible. Attention, John Catch, human, male, born, error, 30, 30. Jeeves? Over here, man. You have been sent a command from Central Office of... Criminal sentencing and law enforcement to investigate a sub A level conflict case. Really? Well, that's good. Means the animal's over the whole parakeet incident. What the hell have you been doing to parakeets? Nothing they could prove, apparently. Phil, you remember my good friend and authorized automated investigation assistant, J9? No, I don't, and my name is Bill. Well, regardless, sub A is a big ticket crime. The biggest. Jeeves, how much does a sub A contract pay? I call him G's because he has to do everything I say. It's, it's a fun, playful relationship we have. Contract details are not to be disclosed publicly. It's a few thousand is what he's saying, so... Jeeves, if you would bring your metal carcass over here, I'll just pop the old thumb signature on your little screen there. There, you vulture. You'll have your blood money as soon as I get mine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a sub-A crime to investigate. And though I dislike your business practice and personal manner, I would like to be a little more hammered before I do, so... How's about a double for the road? <sighs> Alright, buddy, let's go. I'm driving. I detect alcohol levels too high Logic to... Logic override, command prompt 626. J9, please state function. Bring about statutory case resolution by assisting human law enforcement temporary contractor John Elizabeth Church. Are you authorized to ignore certain low-level laws if they get in the way of me resolving this contract? Affirmative. And will my inability to drive to the crime scene hinder my ability to resolve said crime? Affirmative. Now, given that I spend 80% of my day wrecked, do you not concur we will have to do away with a silly not drinking and driving rule if we ever want to get anything done? Affirmative. Please collect your temporary law enforcement permit. Thank you, Jeeves. Let's go solve a murder or whatever. Oh, and Jeeves, before we go, write up Bill here. Give him a citation for, I don't know, unhygienic facilities, assault, and what the hell, let's say, keeping wildlife without a permit. Bill, Henry, Ryder, you have been charged with failure to meet hygiene standards, assault, and illegal position of wildlife. Your fine comes to three thousand double dollars. You're a piece of shit, John. No, I'm not. You just don't get my sense of humor.
All right, me old Chrome chum, give me the details. Sismic Jeremiah Gronk. Well, that's a dumb name. Sismic Jeremiah Gronk was found decapitated at 6 a.m. on Friday the 8th of June. His body was located in his office at GNR Studios and found by security agent David Henry. Witnesses? None. Video? None. Suspects? Preliminary investigative analysis suggests 17 known suspects. 17? This sounds like an actual case. Why the hell have they come to me with it? I have no file information as to why. The Admiral's probably still thinking about that little bit of money I owe him. Jeeves, be a dear and put me through to Admiral Clone. You solved it yet? Whatever happened to hello? How about, what have you been up to, John? How's your memoir coming along, John? You still got that rash, John? Catch, if I gave a damn about you or your personal life, I would have asked how the hell it is no one's murdered you yet. But since I don't, I'm going to get straight to the point. The reason I gave you this case because is... Because I owe you a little bit of money. A grand, half a monkey. Well, that's not how much a monkey is. I owe you, like, maybe 5,000 double dollars. It's like, like a vole or a hamster. The reason I gave you this case is whoever works it is going to end up uncovering something the people who pay our salary would very much like to remain covered. Oh, now I see. This isn't about your old pal Jean paying you back a few double dollars he may owe you. This is about your employee Jean being used to sweep yet another thing under the rug. That's fine, I've always got my broom handy. I know what I'm here to do. Tell me what I need to sweep up. We talking perverts, drugs, drug perverts, all of the above? It's best to assume so, yeah, but that's not what needs hashing. What needs hashing is who he did these things with. Are we clear? As clear as the look in my mother's solar eyes as she told me I would never amount to anything, sir. Good. Do this without causing a fuss and we'll all come out the other end with something to show for it. Except for Gronk. I'm on a bus. But for J9's sake, you do want me to catch the murderer, right? Jesus, John, I know you're illiterate, but I would have thought you would have at least learned to read between the lines by now. A Shakespearean level put-down, sir, but I would prefer what I'm meant to do here be on some kind of official record. Look into it, John. And if you find the person that killed him, fine. If you don't, whatever. Just don't piss on anyone's shoes who's going to whip their cock out and piss on mine. You got it? Avoid the piss party, yes, sir. While I have you, can I ask you some questions about my expenses? You can, but first, let me ask you something. Why is it I can't find that picture of my daughter I keep on my desk? It disappeared right after you were here last time. You know the one, with her and her husband on the well, beach. Well boss, and... I got a lot of things to do, so I best I gotta go. I'll call you later. Bye, love you, bye. Imagine, if you will, America being rebuilt from the ground up today. What do you think they would start with? If you said a new system of government in which everyone is treated equally, you're very wrong. Well, you're not wrong, that is a good answer. It's just not how things work, is it? The new America was founded by corporations, and as such, they went about forming a new civilization, the same way they would go by setting up a new company, finding a product that the market dictates is in demand, then selling it for a profit. You see, although the rest of the world had agreed to stop going to war with each other, that didn't stop things from sucking. Countries were overcrowded, crime was rampant, and that whole not vaccinating your kids thing really blew up in a lot of people's faces. The only form of escapism, that is to say, the only legal form of escapism people had, was movies. Cinema had really took a hit around the 26th century. Not only was there no Hollywood churning out big budget spectacles because there was no America, there was also the feeling that, what with the robot hordes trying to take over the Pacific Rim, and the Dutch government using their weather machine to hold the rest of the world for ransom, there were more important things to deal with than making another goddamn Rambo film. And yet while all this was happening, over the centuries and across the globe, which we'd all come to agree was now round, old movies, the ones we know, were still as popular as ever. Because classic cinema, which by this point meant from the period of 1980s to the 2040s, depicted a world of wide open spaces filled with fun and adventure, the audiences of the new world, who had none of that, were drawn to them. This is why the new American settlers, who had done their market research before they left, realised the best way to make money would be to revitalise America's highest earning export. But since making weapons of war was no longer an option, they went to the second one, movies. You have reached your destination, G and R Studios. Yes, Jeeves, I saw the large neon sign too. Can I help you, sir? Temporary investigator John Catch. So you're here about the gruesome murder? Yeah, but if there's time, I'd like to do a studio tour. 
Is, is this where they filmed the Gun Vengeance movies? All tours and filming have been suspended for today because of the gruesome murder. I never get to have any fun. Okay, then show me the, you know, the whatchamacallit. Jeez, what's the word we're meant to say instead of bloody husk? Cadaver. Yeah, that. Right this way. Is that the boss man's car over there? Parked like an arsehole across three spaces? Yes, sir. The Alfa Romeo 29. One of two ever made. Well, shit, I'd cut someone's head off if I saw them park a car like that. Many people would agree with you, but Mr. Gronk does, did, own the whole studio. J9, make my first case note. Parks like a dick. Probably had it coming. Also, G and R Studios? I'm assuming the G was Gronk. Who's the R? That would be the late Hank Rollins. Died nine years back. He was skiing in the Alps and there was an incident. I'm sorry, did you say accident or incident? Incident. He was kidnapped by snow people. They wanted to ransom him off, but Mr. Gronk wasn't so interested in playing along. They sent him in here to show him they were serious. Then a hand, then a foot, an arm, a leg. You know. Yeesh. Friends like these. Mr. Gronk was somewhat well known for the lack of a shit he gave about people he worked with. He was a bit of an instigator. Enjoyed seeing people pissed off. Your boss sounds like a bit of a prick. That's only the tip of the prick iceberg. Hollywood history is kind of a hobby of mine. I have a podcast with a friend and we talk about history of the movie business. Ooh, you should hear that what sounds he did great. I'll definitely check that out when I have the time. Is this where the body is? Wow. Now that's what I call a headless whatever. I see a lot of cameras around here. Would I not find something useful on those? Uh, well, no. Okay. Feel like I should ask why that was such an odd response. Mr. Gronk had a system in place for when he would use his office for extracurricular activities. He had a loop of him working patched into the main camera so it looked like he was doing something other than cocaine and actresses. But it's his studio. Who does he have to hide it from? The Shim Corporation. They actually own the studio. Gronk's name is on the wall, but they could have removed him any time they wanted if they found a reason to. The Shim family? Doesn't get much bigger than that. That's right. One of the first five companies that settled in New America. And cousins to the late Mr. Gronk. Well, let's hope one of them didn't do it. They're so above the law, their office might as well be on stilts. Okay, what about a logbook? People drive on the lot to visit him and talk business, right? You must have a record of who's been here. Officially, Mr. Gronk was in New and New York all week. And unofficially? Mr. Gronk conducts a lot, if not most all of his business off book, which is why he doesn't like witnesses and cameras around. His car drives in, I open the gate, windows are tinted so I don't see who's inside. Okay. Well, this Gronk guy was a movie producer, right? What does a movie producer actually do? Officially, he oversees the production of every movie on the lot. Unofficially, he bangs actresses and does coke acts with famous people while raising money for film productions. Well, lucky pup. Having said that, it does sound like the kind of lifestyle where someone could end up getting their head separated from their body. Alright then, Jeeves, where do we start? Do your computer thing. Blood spotter analysis concludes Mr. Gronk was beheaded elsewhere and then his body brought here. No bruising of the knuckles, lacerations at the skin, or tears in clothing suggests there was no struggle. Door's the only way in the office, no sign of first entry on that, so he must have let them in. Whoever killed him was someone he knew, and someone who could have walked around the studio without being suspicious. In 70% of murder cases, the culprit is the victim's partner. Mr. Grung's listed residence is also the listed residence of actress Villacy Vaughn. I'm sorry, did you say Villacy? Villacy. 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 I gotta change your voice setting, man, but whatever, let's go check it out anyway, then we'll call it a day. Five hour day. I'm just rounding up. So, Jeeves, how much do you want to bet me that Grunk's head was cut off by some actor who lost his mind when he didn't get the part he thought he deserved? Placing wages on cases is a violation of- not that, it's the jealous boyfriend. It's usually the jealous boyfriend. Or someone who screwed out of money. Or a director we stole an idea from. These creative types, they snap harder than the rest of us. Statistically speaking, the medical profession is more likely to result- I'm just making conversation here, Jeeves. Give me a break with the statistics. Casual conversation mode activated. How is the family, John? Your wife, Rebecca? No idea. I haven't seen her in like... 13 years? And your son, Damon, who is 15 years old. Is he? 
Ah, where does the time go? Drinking while driving. Jane, I, let me ask you something. How many cases have we done together now? 27, 28? Three. Three? Over how many years? Seven? Eight? Two. Wow. Two. Is it weird that you're my best friend? Not weird because you're a robot, but weird because we never see each other outside of work. Do nine. Jeeves, are you not saying anything because it's weird or are you computing something? In two miles, take a right on Boris Johnson Avenue. May I help you, sir? I'm temporary investigator John Catch. I'm here looking for, a uh... Miss Velocity Vaughn. Thank you, Jeeves. Miss Vaughn. I'm afraid Miss Vaughn's not here. Eh, I got nothing else to do today. I'll wait here for her. Apologies, sir, but Mr. Gronk does not allow anyone in the house while he's not at home. But you're here. Yes, but I work for Mr. Well, you could say I'm sort of working for him, too. In what capacity, sir? I'm trying to find out who cut his head off. Surely you jest. No, jest catches my brother. I'm Jean. I mean, you can't be serious. I'm as serious as a heart attack. Or a decapitation. If, if, if this were true, I, I would have heard. I, I would have been called. How would he call you? His body is in a morgue somewhere, and I don't know where his head is. Look, if you don't believe me, J9, come over here and show him. The following image contains content of a graphic nature. Oh... Oh, bye. Is is is, is that is is? He did warn you. Thank you, robot. I I feel slightly better now. Now, Mister Mayhew. Mayhew, as you just saw, your boss is Dunzo, dead, gone. If you want to ransack this place for all the gold and silver he's got hidden before the relatives show up to claim it, I won't stop you. But before you do, tell me. Is there anyone out there you think wants Gronk dead? Aside from... Yes, I mean aside from everyone. You probably saw him at his least guarded, being his servant, cooking his meals, putting him to bed, giving him his daily enema. I don't know what you people do. What I'm saying is, you would have a better idea of how he was acting. Was he cagey? Was he defensive? I, I can't say I noticed any change in Master Gronk at all. Was he acting like he thought someone was out to get him? No threatening midnight phone calls? No dead animals left on the doorstep? No, sir. I, I would be the one who finds them as Mr. Gronk spends his time either in the office or at the club. Well, what about this wife of his? Wife, sir? Yeah, this Vaughn lady. Well, Miss Vaughn is not Mr. Gronk's wife at all, sir. Perhaps in the common law sense, she would qualify as having outlasted his other partners. But even so, that only puts a grand record as consort of one year. Hmm. A lot of words there. Does she live here or not? She has access to the house, yes, but she's not resided here in several months. Okay, where is she now? I wouldn't know, sir. All right, I guess I'd better look around anyway, just in case my keen detective eye spots something. That all right with you? Of course, sir. Oh, and uh, one more thing. You didn't kill him, did you? What? Grunk. You didn't kill him, did you? Because if you did, it would save me a lot of arsehole running around town asking people questions and doing detective-y stuff. Of course I didn't. Bollocks. Well, best point me to the master bedroom, then. This is the master's quarters. Jesus, what's that? Then, what are the Master's Peacocks? Well, Gronk was definitely living in a different world than the rest of us, wasn't he, Mayhew? His giant house, his awesome job, his peacocks. He seems to be fond of you. He does, yeah. That, that beak of his is finding its way into some familiar places. Get out of here. Shoo. Jeeves, give us a scan, will ya? This takes a minute or two. So tell me, Mayhew, how was uh, Gronk as a boss? Good guy? Bit of a prick? He was a fair employer. You can say he was a prick, mate. I don't care. He may not have been the kindest source. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Here's one for you, then. If I ask around, do you think I'll find someone who has something nice to say about the guy? I would have said the people who works for him at GNR, but now that he's dead, it's ghastly business. Finding anything, J9? Semen stains and cocaine residue. Cocaine or cocaine X? 
High quantity examples of both. How the upper class live. Must be nice. Anyway, nothing looks like it's been used in a tussle. No secret doors you detect. Negative. Okay, let's think this through. No signs of a struggle where the body was found or in the home. No clear threats. No jealous lovers or girlfriends or exes. What about, uh, Kinks? Mayhew, was he into anything fetish-wise? Are there any rooms here you can't get into? I have full access to everything in the house, sir. And in terms of Kinks, I've been present at many of the Master's orgies, and, well, let's just say he was open with his proclivities, and it was not anything anyone would object to. Then I'm officially out of guesses. Might be asleep on a job this Jeeves, mate. James Adolph Mayhew. This is a notification of temporary seizure of property in an ongoing investigation. Your support is appreciated, but also mandatory for this legal action. I'm sorry, what, what's happening? Oh, I'm going to be living here until the case is solved. Don't worry, Mayhew, we'll get to the bottom of this, no matter how many weeks or months it may take. Months? No, no, that's Chief, not... Chief, assist Mr. Mayhew in his compliance, will you? Uh, well, 2.30 in the afternoon. Good as time as any to call it a day. Let's see what the liquor situation in this place is. Mayhew, you want to get blackout drunk with me? Oh, no, you're already unconscious. <laughs> Don't worry, mate, I'll be with you soon enough. Mayhew, I'm not eating honeydew, it's a loser melon. Now you get me a papaya or a rhyme fruit, or I will have you out on the street by the time I finish my Cocoa Pops. Very good, sir. Please, Mayhew, you don't have to call me sir. I feel like that's going to build a divide between us. Do I have to continue to serve you? I'm just saying, as long as I'm here, you've got the legal right to keep getting paid for maintaining the mansion. So, uh, how's the fruit situation looking now, buddy? <sighs> Increasingly promising after I go shopping, Mr. Catch. boy. Send in J9 on your way out, will you? There's my special little guy. How goes the hun, Jeeves? Researching Mr. Gronk's accounts, I see no signs of financial illegalities beyond that which I was instructed to ignore. Which is to say, there was no evidence of large unaccounted for withdrawals and no signs of financial distress. So no debts, no blackmail then. Another dead end, I guess. What about uh, emails? 40% of the correspondences found on the internal server for G&R Studios under Mr. Gronk's name were related to special effects budgets for a new film. 30% talked about casting issues. The rest are best described as miscellaneous. And that all sounds like standard studio stuff, so there's nothing there. I can only respond in the affirmative, in that these issues date back years and no email escalates to threatening tone. You know what I was thinking though, Jay? He's a rich dude, right? Who do rich dudes spend their time with? Other rich dudes. I mean, yeah, prostitutes and lap dancers too. But I feel he would have shared more with the rich dudes than just his VDs and his drugs. Can you play back what Mayhew said yesterday about the club? Well, sir, it's fine, there being out. Has Mr. Gronk spent his time either in the office or at the club? Might be something there. Do we know which club the club is? Forensic accounting analysis leads me to conclude he has invested in the same ventures as other high-level profile LE2 business moguls, four of which have been linked to the land purchases made by shell corporations with ties to the Golden Egg Society. Golden Egg Society? What does that sound familiar? The GES is a members-only club with origins dating back 600 years an invite-only club in which super packs are funded and world leaders picked. The Golden Egg is now said to be more of a social club for the elite. That's right, I worked security for them a few times when I was breaking into the crime prevention biz. They're, uh, <laughs> they're not good people. Spoilt rich kids. J9, can you get me a meeting with the spoiliest, richest one there? No. The organization has no official contact details. Tell you what, I'm going to take a shower of shit and a shave. You get on to the Admiral. I know he didn't want me looking into this kind of suspect, but tell him I have to talk to someone posh so I can use what they tell me to pin it on someone poor. Also, make sure that you schedule the appointment for around lunchtime and find out what the food situation at the club is, because, you know, if it's like a buffet deal, I don't want to fill up on fruit now. Yeah, I 
sorry, I didn't quite catch that. You can say things the like... The fuck is that? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. You can say things like, turn up water heater, or play songs by The Cure. No, no I, I don't want any of that talking shower, man. Just, just be quiet, sorry, okay? I turn, didn't turn quite up. catch that. You can say Dude, things like... Dude, get the message. Receiving turn. messages. You have two new messages. Well, send them to one of Gronk's other lines and I'll deal with them later. I'm sorry. Encryption of this line makes transferring data impossible. Encryption? Are you saying that Gronk had a separate line in his shower? A secret one? A secret shower line? Oh, that's right. You're not a person. You're a shower. Jeeves, can you look into... Jeeves? Oh, still don't like watching me shower, eh? All right, I'll tell him tomorrow. Shower? Play Trash Babies by The Hungry Men. John Catch was created, written, and edited by Liam D. Gillies for TopHatsAndCades.com. It featured the voices of Chris Howard as the narrator, Liam D. Gillies as John Catch and J9, Matt Holland as the barman and Admiral Clone, Paul Quinn as GNR security guard David Henry, Matt Hensman as Mayhew, and Martin Milk as the voice of the shower. All music was scored by Neil Potter. This has been a Top Hats and Canes podcast for TopHatsandCanes.com.